Hi, I'm Tyler Colt from Zanata Consulting, and this tutorial on the sales process inside of Zoho Books was taken from our 2022 webinar. If you do find it useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. That really helps us out. And make sure to leave any questions or feedback in the comment section as well, because we do read every single one. Thanks and enjoy. So normally kind of the first thing you would need to do to make a sale is of course, to add an item. In this case, we already have an item on the books here. So we're going to use this example product to kind of walk through how you would actually process a sale through Zoho books. Um, so under our sales tab, of course, we already have kind of a bank of customers. So we're going to pull from one of these to uh, create our first estimate. And we'll start with an estimate kind of because that is the first step in the process. Now, I do want to highlight, you don't have to use estimates. Um, some people will forego them. You know, maybe you're going to send someone a kind of beautifully designed PDF proposal with a lot of written language and legalese, right? And then you're just going to bill from here later. So you're not locked into this flow. We're just going to kind of show it step by step how you may end up using it uh, inside of books. So I want to highlight here on each of these pages before you've ever created an estimate or a sales order or a package, um, you can actually see essentially what the flow is for using them with these screenshots. Um, I recommend you screenshot these um, or these flow charts here because they go away once you've created your first estimate. And they are very, very helpful, especially for training new people on how the system works. So essentially, you will raise an estimate, you will send it to a customer, they will either accept or reject that estimate. And then if they accept it, we can go ahead and kick it over to either a sales order or an invoice. So let's go ahead and create an estimate here to get started. Uh, we'll go ahead and choose a customer. Um, from here, there's a variety of fields that you might want to track. You know, it's going to give us an automatic estimate number. That's going to be the same in sales orders and invoices. They're going to auto number themselves. Um, if you wanted to put like an expiration on this, you surely could. Um, in this case, we'll leave that empty, but just know if you want to have kind of like a, an estimate that might not sit out there forever, if you're worried about stock or availability, um, you can kind of give it an end date. You can track your estimates based on salespeople. These can either be added custom or they will sync over from your CRM user list um, and actually just make it so that anybody who is a sales user in CRM is also able to be listed as a salesperson here on a uh, record in books. You can give an estimate a subject line if you'd like to. I will in this case. I'm not creative, so I'll just go ahead and put example subject line. And now here is to kind of where we get into the nitty gritty. Um, here's where we'll actually start dropping in your items. So in this case, we just have the one item. So we'll go ahead and put that on here. Um, you'll see we're currently out of stock. That's not going to stop us from moving forward. Um, but it would be a notifier for one of your team members that, hey, you know, let the customer know this is going to be a back order. Um, you can adjust your quantity on this as well as your rate. So while you do have that default rate of 100, that I could make this 90, right? Now, that might not be the best way to do it. Um, rather than changing the rate, maybe we would want to, you know, train our team to put a discount instead. Um, discounts can either be done based on a percentage basis. So I could drop a, you know, a 10% discount in here, or it could be based on a dollar value amount. The one thing I do want to highlight is that the discount is for the, the amount you put in here is going to apply to the row. It's not a discount on each of the items, right? So this 100 is just going to apply to the total of quantity times rate. It's not a per item discount here. Um, I'll go ahead and get rid of that for now. We can keep moving forward here. If you did want to attach any files, you could surely do that here. So maybe you're going to attach a blueprint or, you know, some type of additional documentation. Um, and you can drop in any terms and conditions, which can also be set by default under the settings. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as a draft now that we've dropped an item onto here. And we'll see it's going to give us a little preview of how this estimate would look uh, in the PDF form when it's actually sent out. Um, this estimate can then be mailed directly to the customer, or you can grab a link and send it separately if you wanted to. 
So if you wanted to create your own kind of templated email outside of here and just link to this estimate, you can surely do that um, just directly through uh, this estimate page. So now here, because this is a demo account, I'm just going to mark this estimate as sent. And once this estimate is sent, the customer will receive an email that will give them the ability to review, download, and then accept or reject this estimate. Um, so in this case here, we've gone ahead and marked this as sent. And once it does get approved or confirmed by the customer, we can either convert it to an invoice or to a sales order. Um, now, your, your need for using sales orders is kind of for you to determine. Um, Oftentimes you want to use a sales order for a few different reasons. One, if you're doing anything related to Zoho inventory and you're gonna run it through Zoho Books, you wanna have a sales order. Um, you do need a sales order to create a package. Uh, so if you are gonna run shipping or fulfillment out of here, you'll wanna go that route. Um, you also would wanna create a sales order if you might do multiple invoices for this. So maybe 50% you know, now and 50% on delivery uh, much better practice to have a sales order and multiple invoices off of that. Um, I'll go ahead now and just convert this over to a sales order. Um, looks like this might need to be accepted first. Uh, so yeah, before we can actually go ahead and convert, of course, we do need to have an acceptance from the customer. So I've gone ahead and marked that as accepted. Um, when they do that via email, it'll automatically make this change on our side. Um, I only had to click that button because we're kind of simulating that action. So now let's go ahead and convert this to a sales order. We'll see that it's going to pull up a very similar looking page. So we're not going to spend too much time kind of worried about this. Um, the one thing I will highlight is that it's going to grab that estimate number and drop it in as a reference number here so that you kind of have a paper trail. You know, where did this sales order come from? Well, it came from estimate number eight. Uh, in this case, you know, we'll kind of just keep moving down. We're not going to make any changes at this point because they have already accepted that estimate. So I'll save this as a draft. Now, in this case, uh, you know, people have different business rules. Um, for a lot of businesses, if they're using an estimate, you're going to always just save this as confirmed, right? So you've already gotten that acceptance of an estimate. There's no reason to have this sales order sitting in this like draft or pending status. You would really only have one of these as a draft to send out to a customer if you didn't have an accepted estimate to kind of go before it, or if you didn't have some type of signed proposal or some other thing that's kind of serving as the acceptance or confirmation of this sale. So I'll go ahead and mark this as confirmed. And for here, there's a couple things that you can do. Um, we're going to go ahead and skip the sales order cycle right here. Um, what you can do is using their backend tools kind of automate a couple steps that you might go through when you're doing a sales order, like auto invoicing or auto packaging. Um, in this case, we'll keep it simple. So now that we have a confirmed sales order, first, it is going to highlight because we don't have any items in stock for this, it'll allow us to back order. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but you can think about your sales order as the thing that connects the accounting side of the sale via the invoice with the physical side of the sale via that package. So um, for now, we're just gonna show the invoicing. Packages is kind of unique to if you have Zoho inventory turned on, but making a package is essentially the same as making an invoice. Um, so let's do that now. Uh, so from here, of course, you can download these, send them out, kind of email them back to the customer if they'd like a confirmation. Uh, but the big thing that we'll want to do is convert this over to an invoice. Again, very similar page to what you see on an estimate or sales order. So we'll just kind of fly through this now. Um, down here at the bottom, the only thing that's different on invoices is that uh, you'll need to make sure that you've configured your payment gateways. And if there are any that you want to disable, you can disable them here. Um, you know, strategy around why you might only allow certain customers to use certain payment options. We'll save that for another day, but just know you don't always have to offer every payment option to every customer. So I'll go ahead and save this as a draft and I'll just mark it as sent because we're not going to send it to our demo account. And then now the last thing that really needs to happen in the sales process is you need to get paid. Um, so in an ideal world, right, you'll have your online payments set up. When they pay via credit card or ACH, 
as long as they do it through that payment page, it's going to automatically record a payment for this invoice. In this case, I'll go ahead and record a payment manually just so we can see kind of the full flow here. So I'll record a payment. It's defaulted and assuming that I'm being paid in full. I can choose when I got paid, you know, how I got paid and what accounts I want to deposit that payment into. Uh, we'll just leave these as the defaults and record our payments. And now we've updated that invoice status to paid. And we'll see that we have a link over here to the payment that we did receive. Now, keep in mind, you can receive partial payments, right? So you might have two in here, you know, 500 now, 500 later. Um, you do have that flexibility just based on your own business rules. Um, so now here, I want to highlight something that is pretty important. Uh, if we jump back over to that sales order, right, the one that we actually created that invoice from, you'll see that we can actually see in this sales order that we've invoiced it and we've been paid, but we haven't shipped it. So that's kind of the advantage to using the sales orders is that again, if you're going to use all the features in books and you're going to invoice from here, you're going to package from here, you really need that sales order as kind of the top item that represents the sale as a whole. Um, again, that last little option here would be packages. Um, you can create those and actually run your shipping. Like Brett mentioned, if you have Zoho inventory plugged in, uh, you can use USPS, UPS, Easy Post, Easy Ship, kind of all those options here. Um, but for this purposes, kind of focusing on books, we will skip over the packages section um, and that will kind of round out our sales flow. So again, just as a top down, it'll be that estimate, sales order, invoice, and then payment. And you'll be able to track that whole process again as it rolls up to that sales order that you created. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you did find it useful, please again, be sure to like and subscribe down below. Uh, that really helps us out and it'll make sure that uh, YouTube shows you our videos in the future when we put out more tutorials just like this one. Um, if you do have any questions or feedback, uh, make sure to leave those in the comments as well. We really do appreciate that. Helps us get better and better. And uh, after all that, we will uh, see you on our next tutorial video.